Come with me as I learn about a passive solar greenhouse on wheels. Hi community, Kristen Skelton here, founder of Bud Funding. Today I learn all about this very cool passive solar roller. And here's the 360 view. It's a little shaky, we're working out the kinks here. This is our first in-person interview after COVID. This project was commissioned by Cultivate Cochrane, and in a minute we're gonna learn from some of their talented team members of how this project all came to be. Have you ever seen a passive solar greenhouse on wheels? Let me know in the comments. Let's head on inside. Okay, so I am here with Bree and Carrie. And first, I want to know um, maybe the basics. Where did this idea come from? Our board was uh, looking at building a 4,000 square foot passive solar hub in Cochrane. And um, it, uh, it's such a huge undertaking. And uh, then we heard about uh, the Can uh, Canada Healthy Communities Grant. And um, we wanted to get something going during COVID. And we applied under the idea of having a mobile one that could be really used to go to individuals and to schools. Um, because during the um, pandemic, mm -hmm. it was really, really difficult to um, reach people. Um, you couldn't have large gatherings, so going to them and having it outdoors was one of the best solutions we could, we could think of. And that's something that's really unique about this passive solar greenhouse too, is that it actually has wheels to it. So it can travel around the city or travel around to wherever it needs to go, basically. Yeah, and we've been throughout May to how many schools now? Well, 11 schools and programs. So most of them have been school-based. Um, and I just counted up our participants and we're at over 500 participants. Uh, we were at one elementary school last week and we saw 300 and 50 kids mm -hmm. come through, all of whom were, um, yeah, grades kindergarten all the way to grade four. So what do you educate them on when they, when they come here? Yeah, so, I mean, kids don't know much about greenhouses, and they don't even know why they're important. They know their parents probably have a, an old glass one in the backyard that, you know, grows some tomatoes. Uh, but, so it's really just about for kids getting them engaged in the idea of growing. And, I mean, it's a pretty cool looking space. They come in and they are just wowed by everything green and it looks so weird. It's a tiny home, but it's for plants. And so it's really uh, about engaging them in the growing process. And then, and then we can kind of talk about, you know, the solar panel and we can talk about, um, we can talk about, you know, growing enough food for your community and making things better. And uh, there's just so many things to talk mm -hmm. about, but mm -hmm. mainly growing things and sustainability, yeah. pollinators, native plants, uh, and, you know, anything else the class is interested mm -hmm. in tailoring to. I mean, they love the worms and they love mm -hmm. naming a plant. And feeding them. Yes, I milk. see. It, it, so vermicompost you have here? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's awesome. That's super cool. Won't um, disturb them too much. Really. <laughs> so that's such a great opportunity for young kids to have this really neat experience too. And it's, you know, with without you guys having this idea, it, it wouldn't be here. So, and I'm curious too about the materials. So how did you guys choose the materials? How did you source them? Maybe you can talk a little bit about that. Um, funny Bree mentioned uh, tiny homes. Mm -hmm. One of our board members, a past president, Jesse, Jackie Skripnik here in Cochrane has a tiny home um, in her backyard. It's, a, it's an Airbnb. And oh, cool. um, she also has a passive solar greenhouse in her backyard. And it operates three seasons, three and a half seasons. Um, she's growing grapes in there. She planted things in, I believe it was the beginning of April, and in previous years it has been earlier. And she's had stuff going till November. Um, the materials really, she was a huge resource. Um, she had done a lot of research for her own greenhouse. And then we reached out to the community and we did a lot of watching YouTube videos. We, we looked at Verge Permaculture, um, a tremendous, tremendous resource. Uh, Rob Avis, local engineer um, who builds passive solar greenhouses. Um, we also talked to folks with Ceres um, and uh, Hull Greenhouses 
Uh, Hull is the alternative school in Calgary, and they have a passive solar greenhouse. And uh, great advice. In fact, the garlic that's growing here, mm -hmm. which we planted in the spring, it's an experiment. We don't know if it's going to work great because they're supposed to plant it in the fall, but it came directly from Hull Greenhouse. So here it is, this stuff here. And it doesn't it look super healthy? It looks healthy. Yeah, it looks like it's going to turn into something. Yeah, well, if nothing else, we can eat the tops. We can give them to um, the local food shed, mm -hmm. for example. Um, we, we're not planning on um, using this as a um, revenue source from the flowers or vegetables. Mm -hmm. but, and some of those resources too I can link in the description of this video just so if anyone is curious uh, you, you guys can mm -hmm. press on the link and then follow that to get more information too. So the glazing is polycarbonate, mm -hmm. um, it's triple wall and it's 200 times stronger than glass so we're supposed to have a very hot um, summer, uh, more prone to storms, so I can, I, I think we're going to have some pretty big hailstorms this summer, mm -hmm. and in the future who knows what the climate's going to be like, so something like this is far superior to glass, it's actually less expensive too, mm -hmm. and it's way less heavy, way easier to cut and to deal with, and less dangerous if it breaks, you get shards of glass everywhere. Um, polycarbonate is uh, not like that, and it's not prone to the um, problems that fire glass used to have with greenhouses, where they would degrade, they'd get crumbly and yellow and opaque. Um, this won't happen because it's coated with a, like sunscreen on the outside. Mm. Um, so that's the polycarbonate. This is acrylic. So acrylic is 17 times um, better, tougher than glass at resisting impact. So if you go... Mm -hmm. Not a problem. I could not do that to that thickness of glass. Um, and you could take an axe to the polycarbonate. No problem. You'll have a little dent and a scratch. That's mm -hmm. about it. Um, so that's that choice. Then there is the wood. Cedar was the natural choice because in a, an environment that could sometimes have water splashing, um, cedar has natural toxins inside of it, natural pesticides. And it smells so good too. It smells amazing. <laughs> so cedar is... Uh, uh, the window frames and the beds. Um, then we've got um, inside the walls, really interesting. Um, there's there's polyisocyanurate, also called polyiso. It looks like styrofoam, but it's way better environmental. Interesting. And it has some different properties as well. Yeah, it does really look like styrofoam. Yeah, it really looks like it, but it's not. Oh, cool. And it's coated with a reflective membrane, mm -hmm. like foil and also a waterproof membrane, which you don't really need, but it's there just in case there's a crack in the polyiso. Mm -hmm. And what you're looking at right now is one of these window vents that we can remove and put back in, uh, depending on how hot it is in here, if we need mm -hmm. a bit of extra boost mm -hmm. for some ventilation. And then also in the walls there is rock wool, which is better than the fiberglass pink. Pink. Pink! Fiberglass pink has um, a tendency to get a bit waterlogged and um, that then could lead to um, black mold or other sorts of problems with air quality. Um, and it's not going to insulate well, but rock wool is better in that way. And it also, sometimes it has uh, up to 50% that's recycled. Mm -hmm. So, and it comes from rocks <laughs> rather than fiberglass, <laughs> so melted rocks. And then on the inside of all of that is a layer of phase change material, which is like a heat pack. So you know when you have a heat pack, um, you press on a little clicker, the old style, and then mm -hmm. you, you feel it start warming up yeah. as yeah. it changes to a solid? Mm -hmm. Same thing here. So it I actually off. have one of those heat packs still. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I know That's exactly awesome. what you're talking about. So it's just so really cool that you can put your hand against the wall when the direct sun is shining on it. And in the spot where there's no phase change material, it'll feel quite warm. But where there is phase change material, it's not that warm. Mm -hmm. It absorbs the heat, and then when it gets cooler, then it radiates the heat out to keep the greenhouse um, from really dropping. Like you see most greenhouses, which are just glazing all around. Mm -hmm. They go up like 40 degrees, 45 degrees in the day, and then at night they're down to whatever the outside temperature it is. It could be minus 10. So we've found that we have much moderate, much more moderate temperature fluctuations in here. So. And what about this? So um, inside this, this is just a nice coating. 
Um, inside this, yes, this, this is for educational purposes, partly, uh, and also because <laughs> we ran out of grant money, but <laughs> we could use more volunteers and more grant money, um, or donations. This is the structure. This is, um, at the time that we were looking into the build, we thought we need something that's lightweight because we're going to have soil that's waterlogged. And the plants themselves have a significant amount of weight when they're mature, and especially mm -hmm. if we're going to be growing trees in here or something. Um, so we thought, okay, metal. But it's way more expensive than 2x4s that are made of spruce. Not anymore. Thanks to COVID-19, the prices were the same. So we went with this. And, um, and then we went with wood framing around. Um, and with this, I mean, you might think, oh, it's going to do the parallelogram thing. No, because you have crossbars. So if anybody has um, just a, a low budget thing in their backyard with hoops and you keep getting it pushed over, put some strings diagonal from the tops of the hoops to the bottoms of the others and it'll be really rigid. Our wind is crazy and this thing has been on the highway with high winds and, um, and with highway speed winds from transport and it's solid. Mm -hmm. yeah. stood the test of time. And I see up here, this looks like a heating and cooling system, so maybe um, one of you can talk a little bit about that, yeah, how that works. Sure. Absolutely. So we actually have two kinds of batteries in here, mm -hmm. uh, and they are related. So on the top we have a solar panel, uh, which obviously you can't see right now. The solar panel um, you know, creates obviously solar electricity for us that we store in this more conventional kind of battery down here. And this battery powers what we call, or what is called, the solar battery. So that is this fun looking contraption right here. And I, we always like to tell kids our greenhouse sucks because when it is on, you can put your hand right here and it'll actually, you, you can feel the suction of the, um, of the fan, which is on reverse downwards. So it, let's see if it kicks on. Nah gonna rest for now so but whatever the case usually when it is at about 27 ish degrees and we might modulate it the climate battery will be pulling hot air out of the greenhouse uh, because plants obviously have some ideal temperatures that they like of around 27 degrees uh, and pulls the hot air down through the sort of cold thermal mass of the soil and the the hope is always that the soil is cold enough down in the bottom to um, to actually create enough of a temperature differential that the moisture and the excess heat from the air that's being pulled out will actually ventilate through there's weeping tile down here so basically just like tubing with holes uh, weeps out through there and it gets pushed along and again powered by this the electricity from the solar panel powered along up you can see the one of those white tubes or I guess two of them mm -hmm. um, which pushes it up and then along this other tubing again we can tell with the little holes in it and you can actually feel on a hot day the air coming out of that tubing at the top is cool uh, and then we do also have an out vent there as well so that really works to control excess temperature and, and excess moisture because plants again like around 80% moisture so um, so it kind of has a dual purpose because all, always when you're managing these solar pa passive solar greenhouses because they're so insulated with all the lovely things Carrie was just talking to us about uh, you're going to have to vent a lot of excess heat mm -hmm. um, especially in the warmer months in the winter months it becomes the opposite problem but uh, but that's sort of how we deal with with too much heat how long is this? Um, are you growing? Like how long is your can your growing season be now? That is a good question. We'll <laughs> let you know in January. But uh, it is like we like to say that this is a bit of a demonstration greenhouse or even an experiment kind of pilot greenhouse because as far as we know and we would love your viewers to tell us if we're wrong this could actually be the only passive solar greenhouse on wheels in North America. We're pretty sure it is in Canada. I'm not sure about the North America mm. but we would love to hear about others in the world. So if anyone knows, please if anyone knows, please put it in the comments, and then we'll we'll share it with uh, Bree and Carrie. Yeah, because a lot of the things that were designed in here were designed very differently than a normal passive solar greenhouse would be, uh, because it is on wheels and weight is an issue and space was an issue, uh, and so we've kind of had to get creative. But um, yeah, those are some of the things that make our 
our little space here pretty unique. Mm -hmm. And so with everything taken into account, what was the cost of building something like this? Well, this has all the bells and whistles. You could mm -hmm. do something very low budget, dig it into the ground, insulate the back and side, and roll up the polythene on the side for $50, $100. Um, but this was $35,000, but that's also because it included insurance, it included the trailer we built it on, that was about $10,000 right there. Then there's all the labor. We hired a contractor because we as a board weren't knowledgeable carpenters or electricians. So uh, money very well spent. Um, however, if you're doing this at home, look for information on RV solar or off-grid mm -hmm. RV stuff. There's a lot of really helpful YouTube videos about that, ways to do that sustainably. And if you didn't even want to use solar, you wanted to go fully passive, there is um, a Chinese-style greenhouse mm -hmm. um, close to Olds that's all over the internet and completely completely passive and he grows, I, th I believe it's four seasons mm -hmm. and he's got a really huge amount of uh, vegetable output. So, Very um, cool. Like things like this, this monitoring system, mm -hmm. um, it records the high and low here and above the door over Bree's head. Um, GoV, really good product. We found that you can get Bluetooth graphs of um, the temperature and it records it and then you can right, send it phone. to an email. So uh, there we go, there's an example. The temperature and relative humidity. That's super cool. That's mm -hmm. super handy as it's well. It's so, so easy. And that was one of our battles, I think, is just finding what. how are we going to how are we going to put it all together? What are all these pieces like monitoring, um, all the materials, all the electrical? Uh, we also wanted to have automatic opening. Mm. But when we designed it, we had insulation in all the walls, right? So the regular um, auto vent openers that are made of beeswax or a type of mineral oil, yeah. they're awesome, but they don't fit in this configuration. Gotcha. So anybody who's building one on their own, Mm -hmm. um, these are great. They're only thirty or forty dollars, uh, unless you want a quick disconnect one that's made in Denmark only, one <laughs> one brand only. That's one hundred and fifty dollars to get here, get through customs, and pay in euro. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> um, they are they're so easy to install in a regular like this kind of where all it's got is a thin sort of structure, and you're just opening a vent, and you don't need to have it. Um, latchable or anything like that um, but yeah finding out what to buy that was that, that was, was the hardest part yeah so feel free to contact us and we're thinking mm -hmm. of um, putting together a guide that a that person would be can awesome. buy yeah. yeah just need to do some market research to see you know do you want bells and whistles or do you want mm, budget and what are some of the options that people are interested in. Right, yeah. so sourcing the different materials was mm -hmm. particularly challenging. Yes. Yeah. But it also makes it really fun to educate about because everything in here was super intentional. We didn't have a guide mm -hmm. and there wasn't a, a DIY, you know, this is how you'd make a passive solar greenhouse on wheels in five steps. So. Yeah, it's it's really fun to talk to you know kids especially, but everybody about and and some of the things probably won't work and and we'll have to retrofit or have to kind of be even more intentional and also like network with folks like your viewers and mm -hmm. yourselves um, about you know what other people are doing and find some ways to collaborate and uh, and improve. Absolutely. So maybe you can tell us a little bit about what you have planted, uh, why you have these specific plants and um, maybe talk a little bit about your education, pro ed education programs as well. Bree, over to you. Yeah. Um, so that's another place that we have to be really intentional because again, this isn't a massive greenhouse. It's an, it, these are nice size beds, but we mm -hmm. definitely, you know, we couldn't grow enough tomatoes to bring, you know, to the, to a community cooking program for two weeks or anything. So we just kind of, we wanted it to be again, a bit of a demonstration. Um, uh, greenhouse planting. So we have lots of different things. We wanted to really ignite people's senses, especially for kids when they come in. They love smelling and touching and tasting and feeling. So lots of different shapes of leaves, lots of mm. different colors, uh, 
lots of different scents, both sweet and savory. Um, so, I mean, we tried to grow a variety of things that kids would, would recognize, like pansies and marigolds, and lots of kids recognize tomatoes because there are a lot of intrepid tomato gardeners out there in Alberta, so a lot of kids said their, their parents grew tomatoes. Um, you know, we have beans and radishes. These are beautiful nasturtiums that are really happy, and those will be neat when they come in because you can eat those flowers as well, which people always find pretty nifty. Yeah, and everything we grew from seed, our board all, mm. like everybody kind of pitched in and took, you know, certain plants and, and started them at home. So, you know, I come in and I'm like, oh, there's my little pepper guy grew from a seed. Uh, it's nice to see them again and thriving in here. You know, we have some peppers, both hot and purple over there. We have a uh, sunflower, which actually looks like its placement could have been better because it's stretching right now. So Not, no rain, um, no wind in here. Yeah. So nothing to toughen up the stem and prevent it from getting tall. Uh, some of our things are flowering. We've got a squash over there, with, which is flowering. We have some, we have some tomatoes, which are beginning to flower. And we have some cucumbers that again are a bit of an experiment, but, uh, mm -hmm. but they're happening. You know, cucumbers mm -hmm. in a greenhouse are delicious. And because cucumbers are a little sensitive. Uh, it's uh, yeah, we're just it's nurturing transplant. them as we can. Yeah, and the, the transplant they didn't love. Yeah, it gets too hot. The herbs are yeah. really, really a good one mm -hmm. for greenhouse. Uh, kids love for smelling the thyme and oregano. They always piece it together. It smells like my dad's pasta sauce. Um, and then one thing I do want to talk about over here mm -hmm. that um, both Carrie and I were involved in is there was. Um, uh, native plant salvage over at the corner intersection at a really large intersection in Cochrane called um, or at the 1A and the 22 highways. So they're widening it and mm -hmm. they knew that obviously they were going to have to bulldoze like you can see the, the you know all the big machineries out there um, getting rid of that hillside but there's also like that's untouched grassland you know that is grassland that is so valuable for this regional ecosystem and for our native pollinators and uh, for the integrity of our landscape so um, a couple of folks got together and organized and you know asked the development company and the engineers who were kind of in charge of that area um, if we could have access to to go in in there and there was a UFC researcher but he came out and helped us kind of identify what we were seeing and so we have some of the things are definitely struggling um, our, our wild blue flax um, is not doing great and uh, spiky flax is still deciding on its existence here the bergamot also known as bee balm is doing amazingly mm -hmm. and actually these these little flowers up here or these little leaves are, are a little bit rough because there's so many kids in last week like you know rubbing the leaves and smelling their fingers so that's that, what uh, they use for earl grey tea yeah, yes. yeah. so oh, bergamot awesome. uh, which also has a bit of a citrusy smell and i just learned that um it's it, some Europeans thought it smelled so much like the oranges that came from the area in Italy where they grow oranges, which I believe is called bergamo or some similar word to bergamot. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so that's neat. These wild onions are doing their thing. They're pretty cool, so we type those as well. And I was just at the um, ALCLA Native Plant Nursery in um, in Calgary and uh, picked up some more grass for in here just to kind of talk about because everything in here is something we can talk about and share with kids or participants that come into the greenhouse and we love talking about the amazing tap roots of native plants um, and how important that is to prevent you know the erosion of our grasslands and to you know sequester carbon in the soil and um, and also pollinators you know just because they don't have grass doesn't have nectar and they're still important for our pollinators so those are some of the things that we have in here and is this where water storage so mm -hmm. how does this work so at this point um we left a couple of essential non-essential things off of the um build uh oh, an automatic watering system because brie is so capable <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and uh, an eaves trough mm -hmm. um, because it was going to be quite expensive but then we did some sourcing and we got a pretty good like hundreds of dollars donation from trimet in calgary and they do custom metal work and they made, I'll be going to pick it up this week, um, they made an eaves trough and it's going to connect to this and then when we get heavy rains, down into here. Oh, that is awesome. Mm -hmm. But in this climate, you can never get enough rain. We just don't have enough rain for vegetables. Mm -hmm. Maybe for certain drought tolerant species, but not for most vegetables. 
So we'd have to supplement it with house water so we can fill it up from here. Gotcha. No, that, that rain system is really neat. That's very, very cool. Awesome. Well, is there anything else that I didn't touch on that you guys wanted to share? Any any last little tips, tricks, or learnings? Hmm. Well, I, I mean, I think that that point of, that Carrie made earlier is really important, is that, you know, so many people come in here and they're like, oh, how do I do this at home? And, you know, I think I because in, unless you have a very specific reason for it, there's not many reasons folks would make a greenhouse on wheels. Uh, you know, for us, it is an education tool. This is something that we can bring around to schools. I always say it's the field trip that comes to you um, or to events. You know, we're thinking of corporate events or thinking of, um, you know, definitely farmers markets and things like that so there's definitely and, and this is again an education tool um, I mean there, there are some added bonuses in that we can flip the, the uh, roller around when uh, you know to absorb more sun in the winter definitely we can change the aspect of the solar panel that kind of thing so that is that's that's a pretty nifty thing but like yeah, as Carrie said like you don't have to spend thirty thousand dollars these are very specific retrofits for us I mean the climate battery is really cool um, to, in terms of getting rid of, of excess heat, but again, there are there are lots of different ways to do that in a greenhouse, um, and you know the phase change material is really awesome. But there are other ways of absorbing heat to release at colder times. Like a lot of people do water barrels, for example, just mm -hmm. some sort of thermal mass. Um, and for us, we there's no way we could have done that because of the weight uh, and you know transportation issue. So it's just taking the principles of a passive solar greenhouse and understanding how to um, you know scale them. Again, like we're not fully passive solar because we have that, that solar panel, but how to scale them to your needs and your budget um, and your climate, really. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you agree? She said it so well. There you go. <laughs> Well, if anyone has any questions for either of these two lovely ladies and this project, please put them in the comments and I, I will forward them or I will answer them myself. And of course, if you have any other general sustainability questions for me, please put them in the comments and I will answer them. I hope everyone has a great, great day. Happy growing. Get out there. The summer is here and I will see you all next week.